What's going on everybody, Physio Trader here. We are gonna set ourselves up for a watch list, although this time things are gonna look a little bit different because I am now gonna be using the Charles Schwab Think or Swim platform. Uh, later I will get into a discussion as to why the switch. Uh, other than that, um, let's dive in. Let's try to make this a quick one. Uh, I've got a couple things I wanna do, but I don't wanna compromise quality, so let's go. Uh, over here we do have the Charles Schwab former TD Ameritrade Think or Swim. Let's just make this big. One of my favorite things about this platform is that I do get access to the futures data. So I'm going to start with the NQ data and uh, let's just go uh, and let's see what we can find. So, so far the most recent, I'm looking at a 30 minute time frame. Uh, I'm going to plot out some key levels. Um, looking at some uh, previous price levels here. Um, let's see, this was the Wednesday high. Uh, I think it was Wednesday. And then here, the weekly low. So here, let's just relabel these so I can see these on my charts. Uh, edit property. Weekly high. I'm sure that there is a better way to do this, um, but I do not know. Weekly low. Um, and so that way, if it comes up on any of my charts, I will know be like, oh, hey, there's the weekly high and there's the weekly low. Now with that, I do have a couple things that I, I think this shows uh, to be relatively interesting, which is gonna be kind of this, uh, you know, green box, this supply box, this supply demand just keeps getting bought up, gets bought up again. Now this thing is because we stay above it and we've remained above it, it makes me think that this is going to be a nice, good uh, support line. But then of course, if we do break below it and then we close below it, then we have ourselves a resistance line, which means that we have ourselves a potential for things to, um, you know, be a former or a, a later at that point would be a resistance now. Let's talk about a little bit of a bigger box over here, but um, here is gonna be a nice uh, level here that is gonna be a support. And so we're gonna put this one in here so that we know that essentially outside of these two, I don't really see anything and I don't wanna get super crazy with these lines, um, but um, absence of those, those are gonna be the big ones. Now, let's take a look at the ES. So that was the uh, NQ, the NASDAQ futures. Uh, we do have ourselves this little itty bitty trend line that is just gonna, let me continue, oh no. Come on, keep going. Let's continue that on. So it looks like we are kind of playing on that. So this one's a little bit different because now we have this little short ten trend line. We're above this, uh, close to the 50, above the 200, although the 200 and the 50 are starting to get closer and closer together. Um, and so um, let's see if we can give ourselves some um, support zone. So uh, I'm going to try to get more into these support zone lines and away from these um, the, these kind of much more uh, aggressive key level lines and that way just focus more on these kind of zones because they do tend to be a little bit more uh, of a zone than it does that. So Now that we've got some of these. All right, so just labeling out these these lines real quick. So here again, on the 30 minute, the ES, uh, the futures. Um, let's dive into the S&P 500 where we can start to make some of these. So I just made one of these before. Uh, we do have ourselves a little bit of, a, uh, of an interest point here. Let's see. Definitely see some potential over here for this one. Um, I don't wanna let pre-market data be the thing that holds me. And so pre or after hours data, I want the market data to be the thing that I hold. So that's why I picked that line before um, the market does, uh, does close out on this one. But absence of that, this thing is kinda gonna get wishy-washy on this one. So, um, but let's see, looks like overall, the market's just bullish. The market is, uh, you know, this thing could go sideways. We could get ourselves another run up. I want to see these things get down into these supply lines. And what I mean by that is, as this thing encroaches into this supply line, I'm looking for um, to pick up some shares, to pick up size into calls, and then I will play the bounce. Uh, if it breaks through, there's absolutely nothing but this straight up line here. So if it breaks through, I'm going to get out and uh, let me, you know, recover and uh, retest. So next one up, let's take a look at Tesla. Now, Tesla had its earnings. It was absolutely 
absolutely uh, rubbish. Things this thing to totally got eaten up, which is after the um, a after uh, Netflix gave their earnings and they had a nice, uh, wonderful day. So let's do this. We're just going to extend that little resistance line. So I made it a red box versus this one. Um, now over here, I did actually make this trade. I made a trade on uh, Tesla um, into this little channel here. I was, I think I traded right around here, uh, which was super unfortunate. So I was trading right around here, looking for this thing to have a break, retest towards here for my first mitigation. And then I thought I could get over here into a, a break back into this. Now to illustrate this, I actually adjusted my Fibonacci retracement so that it breaks me into a three to one risk versus reward. And so my risk is right around VWAP. Um, it was about like that. So basically here, this was my risk. And then I was looking for a one to one, two to one, and then a three to one. So I felt very confident that I was able to get this, um, even not even getting into this uh, previous demand line. And so I did think that there was an option of doing that, but because it did not work, I did take my loss. Um, that's fine. Even if this thing does start to play, because as you can see, now we're sitting over that 50 simple moving average. But this is a 30 minute chart. If you look over on a longer time frame, this thing, I mean, this thing gapped down pretty aggressive, nice big uh, candle, smaller candle, you know, what's the opposite of a bullish or bearish engulfing candle. This is the opposite of that. It's just puny on the inside. So the previous candle engulfed it less volume, less interest. Didn't go higher, didn't go lower, stayed smaller, the body smaller, much more condensing. Um, so this thing could be ripe for a bounce, but I actually think it's just gonna consolidate before maybe a fake break to the upside before this thing does um, continue uh, negatively to the downside. And as such, I did not want to hold through it. I can always re-enter into that trade. Now over here, we do have Tesla, or I'm sorry, Nvidia. Nvidia, this thing has just been a monster. This thing's up, 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 up and away. We're just now starting to get ourselves a little bit of a sideways action here. Um, definitely something around this area may have some interest to me, um, but let's see some price points. So. So a little bit of a price point, that's interesting. So over here, previous resistance, previous support, support, support. Now look where it's landing on this. So we could get ourselves another uh, break below this, but again, do not forget that we have ourselves a handful of, you know, 592, that's a pseudo area. So it's a smaller one. So let's just make ourselves a small itty bitty box. Um, but I did want to make sure that it, we do acknowledge, we do uh, adhere to the fact that it is, um, that it is definitely uh, there. Now, interestingly is let's just break this down. Say that this is my risk. Um, again, if we get in here, allow it to go that far against us, then here is our, our opportunity of a risk versus reward. So the question is, do we think it can get back to uh, 610? So that is not for me to decide. Everybody can take their own um, you know, trade plan, make their own trade plan, see what they work. But from here, for me, I really want to see this thing come back down. 570 sounds like a great number. I think this thing is overbought. I think a lot of people are really, really bullish on um, the chips right now. And I, I don't think there's a problem, but I think it's going to be a problem when, uh, if these things start moving to the downside. So uh, definitely some interest there, but I'd love to see this thing get down. This thing comes down this far. That's where I'm getting super interested in, uh, definitely in buying. So let's see, where does that play on the larger time frame? So boom, 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 not that big of a deal. And then here is definitely a big one. Oop. So definitely a big one on this one. So let's see if, yeah. Definitely want to see if this thing can come back down. If this thing could come back down at the 500s, I think there's going to be a lot of interest. I really do. I think there would just be an absolute ton of interest on there. And so that is definitely going to be something that, what was I using the 15? I think I was using the 30s. Uh, just for time's sake, we're going to go back. Um, definitely think that everything's just overbought in my opinion. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still making trade plans. Come on. Tesla, Apple, Microsoft. See, this is the part about Thinkorswim so far I'm not excited about. This thing's constantly got a load lag. Uh, it's not my internet, everything else runs fine. 
All right, well, I'm going to cut it there because it doesn't look like it's going to let me make any more uh, trade plans. And I've got a couple other things i got to do today. So, unfortunately, I'm going to keep this one shorter and sweeter than the rest. But uh, let's see. I'm going to give this a little bit of a try. Um, but so far, not that thrilled with Thinkorswim. So, um, I'm probably going to be looking at other other options, other avenues in the future. Um, DAS Trader is definitely one of those potential possibilities. I will keep you informed in the future. Thank you so much. I'll catch you all in the next one.